Hello everyone. One of my most surprising finds is that a fairly obscure internet provider in the UK, Hyperoptic, there we go, Hyperoptic, uh, the video I made about one of their routers seems to get an unusual amount of views. So while I was uh, browsing eBay and looking at what to do or buy, um, I decided I hadn't done a video on their ZTE branded router. So I've done one on their Nokia branded router and their Tilgin branded router. So I thought let's uh, see what the ZTE branded one is like. Comes with a manual. So this is a full fibre provider in the UK. They run fibre all the way in most cases. I think there are a couple of uh, multi-dwelling units, so flats, where it's fibre to the basement and then gigabit ethernet up into each unit. But in most cases it's full fibre into the building, uh, sorry, into each unit or each flat. And uh, then they have a uh, ONT, optical network termination box, and then you have your wireless router. You do not have to use their routers, you can use your own router uh, and get the details from them to set that up. Frustratingly they also do carrier grade NAT where lots and lots of subscribers share one single IPv4 address due to uh, IPv4 being um, limited or near exhaustion. Um, and you'd need to pay an extra £5 per month to get a static IP address uh, if you ever needed to do port forwarding um, or any other inbound traffic uh, which wouldn't go through NAT or network address translation. So that's the manual. In the box we have the router, got power light, broadband and internet. Not really sure what the difference between broadband and internet might be. 2.4 gigahertz, 5 gigahertz, WPS, which is the wireless push setup button, telephone, and USB. So, left side, don't have anything. Front of it, nothing. Well, so I say left side, there's nothing, there's air vents. And the right hand side, there's some air vents. The WLAN button, which presumably switches wireless off and on, and a WPS button if you wanted to trigger a device to connect without having to type in the wireless password. And to the right of that is the USB port, which is surprisingly USB 3. Uh, on the back we have a physical power button, a power socket, and we'll have a look at the power supply in a minute, a reset hole, so a reset pin, Phone 1 and Phone 2 if you're using the Hyperoptic VoIP service, uh, 4 LAN sockets which will almost certainly be gigabit LAN, and then the gigabit WAN which would then go off to either your wall socket uh, and then down into the basement of the building, or to your ONT which will then go into the fibre coming into the building. In the rest of the box we have two Ethernet leads, or cables, uh, colour coded for the Oops. The sockets on the router, so you're supposed to use the yellow one for the uh, LAN and the red one for the WAN. In reality, these cables are going to be exactly the same, so other than colour coding and plugging things in to the right place or nicely, it's not going to make any difference anyway. Instructions and safety it doesn't really say anything other than uh, power off the device if there's uh, abnormal smoke strange smell, etc. Power supply unlabeled, which is annoying if these things get all uh, detached from each other, so if you're moving house and all these go in one box and all the other devices go in another, um, the BT ones have the BT logo on them, so at least you know what device it belongs to. Uh, so it's 12 volts, 1.5 amps power supply, and the specs on the underside of this router also say 12 volts, 1.5 amps, ZTE Corporation. Uh, I don't know why they do this, but the 2.4 gigahertz and the 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi channels uh, have separate names. 
and it does have a unique password for the Wi-Fi and also uh, which you'd expect for Wi-Fi uh, and also for the admin pages of the router. So that's about it for the physical part of this router. I may plug it in just so you can see what the lights do. Then there'll be another video about the web interface of this router. So what it looks like if you want to log in and change settings on the router. So let's see what this looks like when it's powered on. So that's probably about all that's going to happen or come on uh, because there's no WAN connection or internet connection here with Hyperoptic. It will be interesting to see what happens if I plug in a network cable just into my LAN uh, on, the, on the router's WAN side. So I'm going to expect that one of these lights will come on but one of them will not come on or go red. There we go. Oh, interestingly, the internet light has gone green. I don't like the way it's uh, flashing its internet light quite a lot. I think it might be trying to do a firmware update, which I'm not keen on it doing immediately. So there we go. That's the outside physical parts of this Hyperoptic ZTE router. The model number of the router is a ZXHN H298A router, uh, manufactured January 2020 and branded Hyperoptic in the UK. If this video has been helpful to you, it would be really helpful to me if you wouldn't mind subscribing to my YouTube channel. You don't need to have the video notification switched on, but the subscriber numbers really do help. Thank you very much. And do remember, there'll be some other videos linked in the description. Uh, one of them will be the web interface of this, if you want to see what it looks like uh, when you administer it, which is going to be helpful if you remote support somebody or you're talking through uh, the web interface with somebody. And also there'll be another video on how to factory reset this if you've forgotten the login password or something's gone wrong, somebody's changed a setting which locks you out of it. Thank you very much.